So yes, um, welcome to the second day of the um, MUSI conference. Um, we are starting this uh, morning with the very first um, session on um, newspapers uh, classification and um, yeah, it's actually a quite good follow up um, with the discussion we had um, yesterday um, evening before the um, news I conference ended. We were discussing about how important um, article separation and la uh, layout um, classification is. And this is actually a good follow up, follow -up where we can uh, more and closely discuss um, those questions. Um, in this session, we have four speakers. Um, um, yeah, and I'm asking you to write your questions in the and comments in the um, chat, and we will uh, discuss um, every talk um, in the like after all the talks. So in the end, so we have all the speakers first, and then we we'll discuss the questions. So I would like to start with the um, first um, speakers. Um, from the University of Ghent, Dilaba Ali and um, Stephen Westock. Um, Dilaba Ali works at the Department of Electronics and Information System and Geography uh, at the University of Ghent, and his research focuses on spatial temporal data analysis, information processing, and machine learning for the analysis of moving objects and topological relationships of different objects. Um, he's currently working on a project with the Royal Library Brussels for information extraction from historical newspapers. And Dr. Professor Dr. Stephen Westock um, is um, working at the University um, um, of Ghent. He is since 2015 started a tenure track uh, professorship in multimedia, and his currently um, researching uh, his current research focus is on methodologies and tools to improve the spatial temporal metadata um, quality and querying process. Um, they will talk now about the challenges in extraction and classification of news articles from historical newspapers. You ready to start? Uh, thank you, Sarah, for a brief introduction. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I maybe share my slide. Uh, I hope uh, you all can see my slides now. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so I am the lover really and basically uh, as uh, Sarah already introduced me, I am working uh, with Professor Steven, he's my supervisor for PhD research and my topic of this presentation is challenges in extraction and classification of news articles from historical newspapers. Uh, as you already know that historical newspapers already contain huge amount of information in terms of articles, illustration, history, old maps, and that are really important uh, not only for historians, but every research uh, person who are involved in such interdisciplinary research fields. Digitization of these uh, articles are very important and we already know that manual digitization takes a lot of time and cost and efforts. So automatic digitization is normally preferred. For digitization, we normally use the document layout analysis, but there are quite few challenges because of change of layout with time and these newspapers are, uh, layouts are normally not consistent. So, Document layout analysis uh, is basically better grouping of articles. Uh, we can cluster it as well based on some clustering methodologies and then we can present or we can make some tools so that we can search, uh, we can improve our searchability of collections. So a uh, normal pipeline could be like uh, an image, we can extract some information from that image, we can segment some articles, we can cluster some articles or illustrations. We can also link them to Wikipedia or the existing data sources and then some tools to use such kind of information. Uh, in our research, uh, we started with uh, uh, AutoXML file and the label 
uh, data set of 1938 and uh, we processed the data set for the whole year and we came to know that for uh, document layout expression, there are some important uh, information that are required. So based on this information, we actually make our uh, a scanned form uh, or you can say it as a lay layout as well, like you can see here in the black form. In each in, in this uh, image, you can easily see that uh, every uh, our, everything that is presented on a newspaper uh, is uh, present here based on some uh, uh, different colors like either the red, green, yellow or below. So the red normally represent the titles, the green area normally represent the normal text. Uh, the uh, blue lines are basically the illustrations and uh, the yellow dots are basically the four stop points because when you are linking to articles, it's difficult to find that uh, if the below article is actually the art uh, is the actually uh, belongs to the upper article or not. So for such uh, information extraction, we need the column information, which are really important uh, because normally these columns are also not consistent. Also, we need the heading information and we can extract these heading informations based on the font style, font size. Illustration and captions are also important that uh, sometimes the images are not linked or not uh, placed well, so it's important to link that uh, image to the news article. And breaks points are also important to define two separate news articles. So based on this technique, uh, like we took the raw image, we extract the columns, we uh, form this layout, and based on this layout, uh, I can quickly show you the results that here in the last you can easily see that each news article is perfectly uh, separated and there are definitely some missing uh, points because these are some uh, quite challenges, but uh, these articles are well separated based on the layout and this layout is basically defined based on this XML format file in which we have the information of the location of every bonding box and based on that bonding box we normally uh, in separate each news article and assign a separate id and for visualization we use different colors to present and we apply like we took uh, for one month of data and we built our methodology and we applied it for the whole year and you can even see the results on different newspapers uh, it worked really fine. Basically, the column extraction algorithm helps a lot where we have to define from where because normally in uh, a talk yesterday, we also had some issues that sometime uh, it's very important to define that first column is different than the second column. So this column information uh, helps here to find the actual news articles. But still, there are some challenges or problems. There are some missing blocks, some OCR text problems, some wrong bounding box problems, because like here you can see that sometimes the illustration bounding box and OCRs are a bit a bigger, bit bigger than, than normal. And even sometimes uh, the like uh, there are some missing information because these uh, blocks of text have no uh, title information. Actually, the title of uh, th these blocks are available in the first two columns, but not in the next columns. So sometimes these are not detected or detected as a separate or different article identities. So there are still some challenges in this uh, algorithm. Uh, for text detection, we are used several techniques. Um, the OCR text, uh, there is a text available in OCR as well. There are some machine learning methods, uh, Kira's OCR, then from Google Cloud, these are also available in Azure. These are APIs available for text detection. Uh, some are not free and some are open source. For uh, clustering, uh, is, uh, we can also, uh, we use both uh, supervised and unsupervised. In unsupervised clustering, uh, we have a very nice cluster, but the thing is that Every time you process the uh, data, you will get a new cluster. Maybe sometime you will get a person advertisement scenes or drawing, but sometimes it will 
divide the time into two different parts so it's not consistent every time so it's better to go to the supervised learning process where we define 12 sets of classes and based on these 12 set of classes we are actually trying to predict multi class uh, predictions like there are some scenes uh, available in our illustration images these are basically the scenes like this is seen this is seen but normally this is a scene of building and this is a scene of sport so normal the initial step of uh, detecting the scenes up you can even see in the f1 scores that the scenes and the face and these are uh, i think more than 0.8 so these are very good results but the scene of sport like uh, it's a scene and it's a scene of sport so uh, the percentage of f1 score in that these kind of things are still not good but we are still improving these results and hopefully we will do it uh, soon uh, in our upcoming presentations similarly in the other way around there are some advertisements there are like you can see it as a, these are the advertisement and these are also the drawings as well so the current challenges in this uh, part are to improve the result based on some hierarchical approach like where uh, we have multiple models but then we have also have a challenge of finding uh, for calculating the errors because normally you have separate models so uh, calculating the errors in separate model is a bit challenging part where but we can do it like for the first model we can detect the scenes but for the next model we can see that which type of scene is it like here i discussed last uh, on the last slide that this is basically a scene of building but the model only detects it's a scene so like it's a scene it's correct but it's also a scene of building so the model is currently not predicting all correct values but at least it's not showing that this is a drawing or this is something else or a person but it's predicting it correctly so there is another uh, challenge like the images quality is also a very big uh, challenge because um, and the old newspaper images are normally you know, not good in quality. So we are also trying some gain um, more <laughs> available methodologies so that we can improve the quality so that uh, the model will learn more uh, features. And uh, the, uh, on the other way around, if we want to predict our image, we can just improve the quality and then it's easy for model to predict that it's a scene of building or it's a scene of group like that similarly these uh, things are helpful for finding the recurring news articles because normally uh, adding like we have to add more labels we have uh, for our clustering part and um, like the more data we have uh, the machine will learn more accurately to predict these results some more challenges like discussed in the previous um, talks as well that sometimes the newspapers are in two different languages so it's also a kind of challenge that how you can correlate the news from one article to other article but definitely this this is important that uh, for especially belgians that uh, normally they have one dutch part and one french part then you can compare the news that how the author how the journalist of french part uh, quoted the same article uh, in the Dutch part. So it's uh, a quite uh, interesting story as well. Uh, layout expression also changed with time. So this is also a problem. And there are some machine learning methods of, uh, like we can also try them for uh, instead of using any XML file. Uh, but for these uh, kind of methods, we need some uh, data sets and label data sets and uh, that's uh, also challenging to have huge amount of labeled data for machine learning algorithms. Um, I will quickly just uh, show some slides of the demonstrator. Uh, I would recommend you all to visit this website. Uh, like we uploaded our newspaper uh, tool on this website, uh, and uh, you are welcome to send us the feedback related to this tool. This tool basically. Uh, is for article segmentation. I will just quickly show some of uh, its images. 
like in this uh, tool we have a set of newspapers and based on every single like when you select one newspaper it basically give you the all article segmentation based on our algorithm and you can uh, uh, quick, quickly see that uh, how, how many news are there or which uh, like these two are related like this is the title of uh, this news this is uh, the illustration related to uh, some like this is illustration related to this news or this is the text of this news so you can quickly see the articles and uh, its segmentation results for every newspaper and whenever you click uh, some titles it basically uh, gives you the translation of that image text and it also detects if there is any entity available in that like here you can see this is as an entity and it's highlighted and based on uh, this whole information it also search for uh, this uh, find some similar articles and whenever you click on that article you will go to that uh, page of newspaper it also finds some really uh, uh, some best matched wiki articles as well similar um, same like other tools we also have filtering uh, in our um, tool so you can apply different date filters and different um, language uh, or uh, like text whatever you want to search and then you can uh, have a list of articles related to like it's uh, Hitler is searched and we have the related um, articles in our database. Similarly, uh, the if we click on any image, we can get the similar type of images based on the features or based on available like this is the cartoon so all the cartoons are also so you can use such uh, tools for uh, labeling such kind of information or you can finding the similar uh, events like if you are clicking a sport event then it will show all the sport images so it's like that so this is basically uh, a short presentation for a tool and a also telling about the challenges uh, that we faced or we are currently facing uh, in this uh, research and um, uh, 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 some common challenges are data labels for multi-classification some grouping of pages because sometimes the news articles are in three or four text blocks and we don't know that uh, what is the sequence of these blocks so the sequence determining the sequence that in which sequence we have to present is still a challenge similarly the joining of multiple uh, titles and uh, distinguishing between caption or normal text that's also a very important challenge because normally the normal text uh, that is normally uh, below the image is basically the caption of sometime the caption of that image but sometime a new news article so there is a problem in distinguishing that either it's a caption of this uh, above image or either it's a new text uh, normal text so these are some challenges we are currently working on and uh, this is from my side for this presentation uh, any comments feedbacks for that uh, tool is most welcome on this email thank you so much yeah thank you very much uh, for presenting this actually very impressive uh, work that you have done there and i am very much looking forward to this discuss this um, but now I'm going to um, present um, the next speaker, which is uh, Matthias Arnold. Uh, Matthias Arnold works at the Heidelberg Research Ar Architecture, uh, the Digital Humanities Unit of the Cluster of Excellence Asia and Europe in a Global Context, now the Heidelberg Center for Transcultural Studies. Um, where he conceptualized and coordinated technical development and implementation of research, research databases, mostly comprising non-latent script research data. And he will talk now about semantic segmentation and document layout recognition um, approach, approaches to full text recognition of early Chinese newspapers. You can start. Excellent, thank you very much. Can you now, right? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can see the slides. Excellent. So, 
Thank you very much for inviting me if, uh, to introduce the project today and for this uh, kind introduction of yours. I'm very excited about the chance to learn from so many experts in the field. Our project may be a bit different from what you have seen so far at this conference in that it comprises of mostly non-Latin script and non-alphabetic script material. Our project can be traced back to over more than 10 years of research within various funding frameworks. It originally was created because researchers needed material that is often dispersed and sometimes hard to find. The database thus was an attempt to join material, in this case from roughly the first half of last century or Republican China, together with a number of partner institutions and do this uh, in an open re access resource. What we achieved yet, uh, 308 publications comprising over 300,000 scans, image scans, with almost half of them manually annotated on an item level, which means also title indexes for article index advertisements with additional research-based subject headings, IIIF service, and agent service. And if you are interested in learning more about the project, there is a video introduction available online, uh, and I've added some pointers in the reference section. So how did we start? About 80,000 of our scans, and now the telephone call comes. Huh? Sorry for that. Uh, about 80,000 of our scans are newspapers, so-called entertainment newspapers, or Xiaobao. With 21 years, one of the longer running ones is Jingbao, the one you see here, the crystal, which consists of almost 10,000 scans, uh, or about 17,000 pages. Its content represents something that nowadays is called boulevard or rainbow press. While also title indexes are great to learn a bit about newspaper, for a systematic computer-based analysis of the contents, one needs full text. There are different ways to get there. But neither typing the text ourselves nor having others do it for us was feasible. While Western newspapers uh, uh, for them, it may be true that OCR processing is no more such a huge challenge. This is different for us. Our images are usually secondary copies with all the noise that one can expect. The document layout is dense and complex. And in the beginning, we had no idea what that actually meant. And there may not only be many characters, but also special ones and handwriting. Still, we tried OCR in the scans and failed. Soon we learned that processing full folds is not the way to go. So we tried parts of the page. But these also failed the OCR in this case because of the emphasis characters that were so common in the early 1920s and which are highlighted here in the clipping in blue. However, when we pre-processed an image manually, removed emphasis, optimized contrast, and did some other little tuning, we were able to get at least somewhere out of the box. Now, while a character error rate of over 30% is not really a dream result, uh, it clearly showed us that we had to go for the individual parts of the page. So we started to look into page segmentation. Uh, just as a side note, most of the images I'm showing here uh, are coming from the same fold of Jingbao, which is April 21 uh, from 1939. And you have left page one and to the right page four. Now, for segmentation, what we needed was to get from here to there. Uh, but as you know, as you all know, the last ICTA conference uh, hosted in 2019 hosted the competition on recognition of documents with complex layouts. And the samples we, show, we saw there showed us again how challenging our material is in terms of layout. But yesterday, Endooms presented results from the winning algorithms of their challenge, challenge and I'm quite curious to see uh, how we can, then, can adapt them to our material. Now, when we started to look closer, we saw that structuring elements visible on the page could be of some help. And indeed, if one looks closer at a part of a page, the human eye sees a number of structuring elements, like lines. Here, I highlighted these elements uh, in blue. However, when one looks even closer, it turns out that a line is not a line, not necessarily at least. So some lines are curved, some are waved. 
some lines uh, are actually a row of geometric forms, yet other lines uh, are not visible in the original, but come from kind of misused microfilms. And other lines uh, are actually not meant to be separators, but connect parts of the text. So we learned machine C differently, uh, as you all know. Uh, but we still hope there will be some algorithms at some time uh, that make use of these separators. There is another structuring element, which is registers. Now, registers uh, uh, can, in, in a way, be compared with what we just saw uh, uh, in Western newspapers of columns. Uh, and the Chinese newspaper, even if they may look a bit chaotic at first sight, on second, or perhaps on third sight, they are actually very well structured. Pages are organized in registers. In this case, based on eight characters in height. These are actually forming kind of the backbone of the page structures, and separators keep the distance. One combines single registers into two registers or a double register with eight plus eight characters plus one for because they don't need separated anymore. So that is 17 in height. Or they do this in trivial registers with 26 characters or four or five. Now, the Chinese typesetters are just handling the ideas of registers rather flexible. So they can have half registers, as you see here, with four characters. Uh, they can also have a combination of a three register heading with two 1.5 register passages. Now, unfortunately, this is also an ideal calculation. In reality, the number of characters, as you can see, varies, and it varies a lot. Because larger fonts in headings or subheadings, almost every register segment contains these variations. And in fact, these variations make navigating through the page much easier for the reader, but not for the computer. So if there exist structures visible to the human eye, why not ask humans to mark them and help the computer find them and do it for us? At this stage, we were quite lucky when we met a local uh, startup specializing on crowdsourcing solutions called Palace Ludens. They were at that time looking for tasks in the humanities, so we started the pilot. They formed a small crowd of a group of somewhat more experienced persons who had already worked for them, none of them speaking Chinese though. Their task was to identify and mark information blocks on the newspaper page and qualify them with a category. Indeed, the output was quite good. They identified most of the visual blocks correctly. But as the crowd was unable to read Chinese, they were not able to identify which parts belonged to each other, for instance, which parts formed an article. Therefore, the grouping of individual boxes into meaningful semantic units was done in the second run by a reader of Chinese. Unfortunately for us, Palace Ludens was so good, they were too good. And so they were bought out by a larger company, which meant they had to stop all external corporations. Nevertheless, this pilot was fruitful. We learned that crowd pa crowdsourcing pages, uh, sorry, we learned that crowdsourcing the page segmentation of Chinese newspapers is indeed possible, and that even with non Chinese speakers. Only for semantic grouping of segments, one needs to know the language. As a countable outcome, we completed annotating the first three years of Jingbao with almost 1,000 folds, and we completed the full first months with boxes grouped into semantic units. And then we were lucky again, and this time because of the advances in machine learning. We are seeing a number of machine learning approaches at this very conference, and I'm showing here the ICTA challenge again, and uh, the impressive paper by Liebel and Burkhardt, who evaluated different CNNs on their newspaper materials from Berliner Börsenzeitung. Uh, as, as has already mentioned the, uh, yesterday, uh, we all are in a fortunate situation, namely a number of large projects are working on newspapers, and I only give a selection here. So at the DH 2019, we met members of the Impresso group and learned about their DH segment framework. And at this point, I'd like to point out uh, that it is really 
a great and a special thing and not natural by any means that these initiatives are providing their developments and outcomes open source and open access to the community for reuse. A big thank you at this stage. Uh, now, our idea was not to try to let the segment do everything, but use it for segmentation to detect our main content classes, which is paratext, ads, images, and text areas. To be able to train the network, of course, we had to create ground truth. Now, we were successful uh, in applying at our university for two short-term grants and created two ground truth set. One is the ground truth for geometry. We annotated two complete months with bounding boxes and semantic labels. We processed 70 folds and got over 6,000 shapes, which as a side effect tells us that a fold from the late 1930s on average contains about 90 shapes. For the annotations, we used our own annotation tool, which we asked exist solutions to develop. Here we can create boxes, label them, and group them into semantic units. The tool generates output in JSON format, which we store in a database. The second ground tools was the text. We adopted blind double keying method and were able to finish all 10 issues from April 1939. These 40 folds contained about 245,000 characters, which we recorded in a local XML format. And we also learned that in April 1939, approximately 6,100 characters are found on a fold. We also had to learn that typing was not fast, so taking about 10 hours a fold. I will talk about the reasons uh, for that in a minute. For the text, we use a local XML schema, uh, differentiating with the content, recorded characters according to their original text, and use their respective Unicode code points as far as possible. Since we aim to use the text for OCR later, we also encoded the different running directions of the text, including the text within advertisement. And uh, it turned out that this was one of the main reasons why typing took such a long time to forward. Here you see uh, an example of a ground truth. We defined the default running directions, uh, the direction of the text within the highest level diff element uh, as vertical right to left, and the direction is right to left. Uh, and passages with different running directions, we assign the change attributes in the respective sublevel divisions, and where this ends, the default becomes effective again. In case you were wondering, uh, here's a visualization of the different running directions on that fold. Uh, the majority text is vertical and right to left, marked in orange. But there are some passages in horizontal directions, like those from right to left in green, and a small number written left to right in blue. Uh, and Clemens Neudegger yesterday uh, mentioned the difficulties with establishing a correct or at least good reading sequence, even for German newspapers. We experience similar difficulties with our material. So we are starting here at the top left, right, uh, and on the page one on the left. So for instance, if you look at uh, item 11, it continues not to the left where 12 would come, but there is a second part, 11a, which continues below in the registers. And similar things you see with, with number 14 or on page four at the right, uh, which I, with item 24 or with item 29, which consists of three parts in different registers. Now for our first results. We trained DH segment with all our annotations over the whole run of the ball. Here is an example of the outcome. On this fold, the network detected paratext in purple and text areas in orange quite well. Images and advertisements are hidden. So we could use this now for further processing texts and go in, in deeper into semantic types within the article type. Perhaps this already goes into the direction of content-based segmentation. This was discussed yesterday. A short thing to what we are doing now. When the pandemic started, we had just begun to work on the technical infrastructure. With the additional modules and rising expectations to the ECPO framework, it soon became clear that we have to expand there. Originally, just an SQL database and data on the file server, we added a AAAF service, an annotation module, the DH segment workflow, and the central storage to all textual data. Uh, this is still in progress, uh, and it took us quite a long time. Now, in closing, some more challenges. And if I have to check if time allows, 
Can I get a signal? So I'm, I'm make this quick. So besides uh, these uh, infrastructure challenges, uh, which we try to uh, solve by uh, redesigning the infrastructure and containerization data, uh, data uh, modules, uh, we also had uh, the neural networks uh, that require quite strong machines, but we were fortunately enough so that we can use uh, the state-based high-performance cluster here. Uh, and we are very, a very small team, uh, and our next step is to set up the pipeline with automatic processing to get eventually to the actual OCR. Now, uh, since we are so small, uh, but uh, uh, perhaps the material is interesting, so we are very open uh, to uh, share our data. And uh, if you want to, uh, we are also very open to do collaborate within other projects or other initiatives. Um, I'm, because of the time, I will skip most of the parts of the last two points I wanted to make, but I wanted to want to mention it at least. Uh, we are also having to two more challenges. One is the Latin script bias, because many of the algorithms are trained on Western alphabetic Latin script material. Not all of these uh, work for us, so we have to do our own trainings. Uh, and we also find that we have to be the ones uh, who have to introduce our material and our challenges to you, the large uh, uh, expert group, to make you aware of uh, these challenges to perhaps together find solutions. Another challenge is uh, uh, a very common uh, uh, perception that is, uh, aren't the Chinese doing all these things what you do already anyway? And uh, this led uh, uh, to some fundings, uh, not uh, some applications for funding not being not ex uh, successful uh, because we were asked uh, about this and people always say they, were, they do it anyway. So we are, have now started to look into this uh, and doing is uh, currently working on a systematic literature overview. Uh, and it turns out that this actually is not the case. So, uh, and with this little teaser, uh, I'm coming to my end of the presentation. We will submit this in May to a DH journal. Uh, and here you see part of our team, and there are some references. My name is Matthias Arnold. Thank you very much for your interest, and I'm very much looking forward to your questions. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this very interesting insight into article segmentation in uh, Chinese uh, newspapers.